Uh, a senior Russian general, as, Gre as Greg was just talking about, was reportedly aware of Pogosian's plans to rebel in Russia. Of course, that's leading to questions of all sorts and what kind of support Pogosian may have among those close to Putin. Victoria Coates joins me now to talk about all of this. Uh, Victoria, how much credence do you give to these reports and is Putin's future a, a, a little more shaky now? Well, good to be with you, Ashley. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this report that uh, General Surovikin it was somehow colluding with Prigozhin, and he was the former top uh, c regular military commander in Ukraine. So they would have had a lot of time to discuss what was going on. And if this be true, and he, he came out and c at first condemned what Prigozhin was doing publicly, but has not been seen in public since sun or Saturday, I think. So. So we might be a little bit concerned about his fate. This certainly indicates the rot may be going farther than just the Wagner group. It's interesting, they, people talking of a purge, could that be of Putin and his cronies or those that were trying to plot this uh, rebellion? I mean, which way does this go, do you think? Well, I think for Putin, it's very much he wants to purge any of the any of the conspirators mm. out of the military. But the problem he has there is, you know, that that this is going to be very disruptive at a critical time for the war in Ukraine. And don't forget about all the other activities that Wagner and the Russian military are carrying out in Africa, in Venezuela, in Cuba, around the globe. So this could be a, you know, a long-term problem for him as he tries to maintain control. You bring up a good point, because what happens to the Wagner fighters now, because they have been a key part of the Russian offensive in Ukraine, if they go away, doesn't that leave the, the Russian military very shorthanded? It's, it's going to be a huge problem for them. The Wagner are the only ones who have had any success recently at Bakut, in that town in, in eastern Ukraine, which was a big symbolic victory for them. I think as we approach day 500 of this war, though, if that's, if that's the biggest thing they have to point to, and it was due to Wagner, and they're getting rid of a lot of their senior, uh, their senior commanders because of the, the, uh, the coup attempt, they're really going to have, you know, a lot of trouble going forward. If I, you know, if I were the Ukrainians, this is when I would press my advantage. All right, I'm going to change subjects for you, Victoria, because I find this interesting. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu confirming that he's going to be visiting China later this year. What do you make of the visit? It's, it seems like a little bit out of left field to me. What say you? Well, you really can't blame the Israelis. The administration has been just incredibly hostile and... Mm. Uh, and distant from the Jewish state since President Biden came into office. And there's a, just a long laundry list of things that they have done, both material and symbolic, to make very clear that they are not, are not friendly toward, toward Israel. So I think for the prime minister, who very much wanted to come to Washington after he uh, came back to the premiership, and has not been offered any sort of a visit, let alone a state visit, like the one that we saw for Prime Minister Modi last week, uh, I think he's making it very clear that Israel has other friends. And so, you know, it's, it's deeply disappointing for those of us who see tremendous value in this relationship. Mm. But as I said, you really can't blame him. Does send a strong message, no doubt. Victoria, we're out of time, but thank you so much for your expertise this morning. Fascinating Thank you, stuff. Ashley. Thank you.